Uh, I have been volunteering with CACV, Community Arts Council of Vancouver, for two years. Uh, and uh, we had these dialogues uh, where we had panels of speakers um, and just the community coming in to hear these panels of speakers. And um, uh, I work sort of from a visual arts and performance arts perspective. So when I came into CACV and looked at the dialogue format, I thought that we needed some more participation from the community and not just be listening to artists talk about their projects. Uh, but what if we actually involve um, sort of arts-based practices and introduce that to the community and have them make art pieces about uh, things that were important to them. And so through a lot of discussions, uh, interculturalism came up as a topic that needed to be explored because of the, the diversity of the downtown east side. Uh, there's so many different people, so many different culture. Uh, we're in Chinatown. So we thought, okay, well, let's do an interculturalism dialogue, but instead of using just spoken words, let's talk about uh, the possibility of using art and any kind of art, from visual art to poetry to music, and uh, how can we ex express that, that ideal, um, express those uh, concerns uh, and things uh, and thoughts about interculturalism um, and, and put it out as an art piece, uh, which was very, very helpful for a lot of people because during the whole process, people had epiphanies, people had ideas, people had, had um, sort of discoveries that they pro possibly wouldn't have if they were just talking. But being able to see visually uh, what the responses were to the questions brought light to a lot of people uh, in terms of thought patterns and understanding. So that really, really helped. Well, for me, I really understand interculturalism as on some level being like um, a conglomerate of parts. Um, and well, you know about a conglomerate is like a stone that's made of stones. So for me to understand interculturalism is to understand that it's the glue that ties many cultures together. Um, it's not so much like you're that culture, you're that culture, you're that. It's about the fact that there's a lot of different kinds of people and we all belong and the glue is the belonging. And so I'm kind of creating a metaphorical structure. Um, maybe thinking about the earth, maybe thinking about a conglomerate, um, and it's the mortar that matters, the space in between. It's the crossing of cultures and the sharing, because we could live in a multicultural world where we don't interact with each other, and, um, but it's, I think it's a sharing and an acceptance. It's kind of, I'm, I heard of this girl who does um, belly dancing to heavy metal music and that's kind of where you know the beauty of it something new arises where you could relate to other cultures and bring your own culture into yeah. basically I, I took photos around this neighborhood um, and I ventured down to the Hastings area and then we're just standing around and this guy just came up and started talking to me, and I started talking to him about um, culture and how we could accept each other, and we all come from different places. So, kind of um, the conversation was kind of diluted. It went all over the place from talking about pickled beans to I don't know all sorts of stuff. And I just asked the guy if I could take a picture of him, and he was he was fine with it. So, um, took a picture, and what I really want to do is maybe. Uh, have a copy of it and bring it to him and he lives in one of the SROs here so that'd be sweet. Well the question that I'm dealing with is is interculturalism and 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 how how everyone can basically participate and I came up with a song which is the O'opono and the O'opono resonates with me very very deeply because it's being translated into many different languages all over the world right now. And, and it's being used in the peace movement. And what I've, what I've hoped to do is to translate the words, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, into as many different languages as possible. And eventually we can sing it together as a canon. And it can be performed in our community as a folk song that we can use to tie us all together interculturally. 
And I think it resonates really deeply in particular because it speaks from that place that's in us as human beings universally. We all want to be forgiven. We were like cactus. We, we live together and we sometimes are abrasive and we don't even know that we're, we're affecting, uh, we're pokey and, and itchy scratchy on people around us. And we don't realize it until we've already stepped on someone's toes. So we all want to be forgiven. We all want to ask for forgiveness. We all want to show love. And we all want to be, gr be in a place of gratitude. And the melody goes like this. It goes, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. Je t'aime. Lo siento. Perdone, por favor. Gracias. Asiero. Come and asai. Thank you so much. I. I'm, I'm so happy to be here, and this is what I'm doing, so thank you for asking. I feel that with the process today that we went through, uh, and, and with every process that we do, every time I facilitate a dialogue like that, um, it's, always, it's always a good surprise for me. I always associate serendipity with, with processes in, in dialogues like that, because um, the process allows for people to participate without feeling lesser or more than other people, it sort of equalizes the playing ground. And I, I personally like this process. Um, and it's also a process that recognizes different people's strengths because not everybody think in words. And so I feel that with arts-based processes, you're always able to level the playing field a little bit and that everyone can participate. It's inclusive. Uh, it helps people to access different patterns of thought, different ways of thinking. Uh, and, and I personally love the process. I love the fact that we were able to use our bodies. I love the fact that we were all able to come together within a very short amount of time, without too many words, and get into sharing really, really personal stories. But, but just by using the body alone uh, was enough to do that. And, and that, was, that was very precious for me, all the stories that were shared. And considering the fact we don't have two hours in the morning, uh, it, it came by really fast, uh, stories came out really fast, and you can just see the whole, the, whole, the whole energy that changed. And people became more connected, people laughed together, and that was important. Um, and so yeah, I stand, I stand by a process like that. I, I love this process, and I would recommend it to anybody who wants to engage in dialogue, any facilitator uh, who wants to do dialogue in this way. It's very, very fun. Uh, and it's very, uh, it's very eye-opening and very mind-challenging. Yeah. And it's always, it's always good to, to give up that control of, you know, I don't need to be the, the person to provide the answer because the community will take care of themselves. Yeah, I like that. <laughs>